Hmm. Okay, here we go. I thought I might do a little recap on Montalama, which is probably not pronounced correctly, and uh, let's have all the French Canadians get all their knickers in a twist, and all the Euros get their knickers in a twist, and move on. Here we go. So, CSS system, you're probably all familiar with it. It's uh, Adam Starkweather's uh, reimagination of the GTS system, the Grand Tactical System, uh, that was uh, what is still being designed and uh, developed by other folks now over at uh, Multiman Publishing. This is a Compass Games title. And this uh, particular battle, called the Anvil of Fate, is set in uh, August uh, 1944 just as the Allies have invaded the south of France. And then this is a situation where the Germans are retreating north and a, a task force is put together by, uh, I think it's a Major General, Major General Butler. And I've read a book about him. He's from the, he was uh, the, one of the generals from the 3rd Infantry Division and has a pretty illustrious career. But anyway, he, he uh, forms a task force, combined arms task force, and they try and cut off the retreat of the Germans uh, moving from the south of France to the north. And this game attempts to emulate some of that over a number of days. Uh, turns are either two or three hours, I, I forget. I'll have to, we'll look at that in a second when we get over to the, <coughs> to the uh, charts. But it's a very large game, right? So we've got five maps laid out and not a lot of counters on it right now, as you can see. And lots of stuff has gone on. And today we started at uh, about 9.45 and we got through 15 turns. I'm probably gonna need to put some more lights on here, I think, uh, but just bear with me here. We started August 21st. I think we started at nine, it's either nine or 11 a.m. And we're now August 22nd and we're uh, two chits into the 19th. Uh, the 1900 hour and so you can see there it's a two hour turn game turn hexes are 500 meters and it uses a combination of let's see uh, command points and what they call dispatch points to allocate commands to various formations within divisions and to activate divisions themselves and other things in the game so you, you're rolling for points and uh, there's a certain minimum that every formation receives. You can see, you can see here, this is uh, some of the uh, units that are uh, in holding and uh, unallocated trucks, uh, available support weapons for this specific division. And I can see my, where is my track? Yeah, here's the track for all the different, different uh, dispatch points, fatigue level of the division. Uh, current uh, troop quality here and uh, this is my direct commands which I can give to individual discrete units uh, to do something and units I, I'm not going to go through all the details on the different units and what, all, all, the, all the different stuff that they can do but just to give you a feel for that uh, we'll, we'll look at the map in just a second uh, we've got reinforcements coming on the 23rd late on the 22nd yeah, for both sides there, and then uh, even more on the 24th. And I think this scenario runs through, possibly all the way through the 29th. And there's a, uh, so it's interesting because, let me just put the lights uh, on. I'll mess with the lighting on the camera, but so be it. <clears throat> so, Task Force Butler starts here and has to, you know, get, go, get into what they call column mode and hoof it all the way down to here. This is one of the few bridges that can be crossed. And there's another bridge, a railway, uh, it looks like a railway line. You know, that pink line there is the evacuation road. Uh, and uh, that's a bridge as well. They're the only two functioning bridges on the, on the map to get it, to get it, that uh, the Germans could get across. And then the Germans will need to Right underneath with that booklet, there's an exit hex, and the Germans will need to get to that exit hex and move their units off the map. So where do the Germans start? The Germans start coming on board around this area here, and some here, some here. Uh, the, one of the first things, the Falsham Jäger come on first, and they'll capture Montalamar, 
they pick up a, uh, you know what, I probably should put that unit back there at some point, uh, but they will uh, capture that hex. These hexes are worth half a victory point each. The yellow hexes are worth one victory point each if, if they're occupied. And the red hexes are worth uh, two VPs each. Now what's interesting is during this game, it's the, the, the units that come on, there are three uh, battalions of forces that come onto the map for the Germans. And there are some tanks that can come on and you can pay extra VPs to have more tanks, more Panthers for the Germans. And you've got the Falsham Jäger, which are attached to the 11th Panzer. And their job is to, uh, so the job of the infantry is to kind of clear a path so they can get these tanks off. But uh, the tanks don't all just come on straight away, which is one of the little things in the scenario rules that I didn't quite appreciate. So we're not gonna have this massive wedge of Panthers to blow our way through. What we're gonna end up having is a trickling in once per day of a variable number of tanks, and that is gonna cause a lot of problems. And there goes my air conditioner. It's gonna cause a lot of problems for the, uh, for the Germans. So the Germans' plan initially was to sort of stretch out this initial defensive position that Task Force Butler had set up, and they've got their arty parks all uh, allocated and uh, causing mayhem for us. And they've got a couple of companies, uh, battalions worth of companies here, and some uh, tank units floating around as well, and some mobile artillery. Uh, here's a scout uh, car using its capabilities to spot my artillery, which I have not really protected very well, and it is uh, knocking the crap out of me down there under a heavy barrage, making, basically making it combat effective, ineffective. There are some more uh, German, uh, sorry, uh, American tanks there. He picked up another hero. He's got more heroes that he can poke a stick at at the moment. And the Germans have just taken this uh, 110th uh, regiment, has just taken this town here, which is a key uh, in a junction that will allow me to push up this way. But this, and uh, that's been very slow going. Uh, there's a a cadence and a methodology to the gameplay that I struggled with with GTS and I'm struggling with here, just in terms of uh, grokking the best way to move, fight, combat, move, uh, so, sort of move, fire, assault type of thing. Uh, it's, it's tricky to get right and it is often dependent upon the sequence of the chits that are pulled, given that it's a chit pull game. Uh, so I had got my one Panther company up here and I'm trying to knock out this, uh, this is actually uh, Butler himself and he's with these hefty, I think these are M10s, don't they look like M10s to you, Hellcats? And they are knocking the snot out of my infantry, I've lost two companies to those guys as he just wheels all over the battlefield knocking me out so I now finally have some firepower that can do some damage to him but it's cost me two companies so far uh, which has whittled down the 111th regiment here and uh, caused me some problems but I do have uh, I do have a, almost a clear path now to head up this way through this pass up here let's see that pass there if I can keep that pass clear, I did have units in there, but he moved these tanks that were I just showed you with Butler and, and knocked them out. I killed a scout car up there, a scout car uh, formation up there earlier on. Or maybe he moved it away, I forget. But one or the other, I, uh, I chased him off. And uh, so we're trying, to, we're trying to press through. Now, in other games of this nature, i.e. the GTS system, and in fact when we played one of these other scenarios, we, I kept the formations very close together, uh, just because that was kind of doctrine, you know, doctrine, you don't want to have, you know, companies aren't supposed to cover massive areas, they're supposed to be, you know, relatively close to each other, and given the 500 meter scale, you know, you just you want to keep stuff together. But this is a 
fairly dynamic situation, I think, and I, and, I, and I was thinking, let's try, which I did. I took the recon battalion and I just scooted it all the way up here. So there's two units up there. We're gonna take VPs when we do the VP counting in uh, the next turn or so. And there's some forces up there that are gonna take, uh, capture some VPs. They're in the city of Crest. And, uh, you know, we're trying to do some things that are a little, a little different. And that's what's been expensive in, is, with this experimentation, is that we're actually having uh, some higher casualty rates than I expected. And he's using these tanks and scouts, probably as they should be, to move into a situation where he can spot my guys and then drop hellacious amounts of artillery on them. And the only way I can use my arty until I had got uh, received my division command shit was through these direct commands for which you only have a certain number of points every turn and you can't waste them and I had to have guys that could spot them I only had infantry and I really couldn't get too close to any of his stuff to be in spotting range because he had a better range than I did and he could fire back because they're tanks or scout cars blah 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 and it got ugly and so I've uh, not done a good job of playing the game so but we're learning and so far, you know, we're only second day into it, and there's two of us playing at the moment. Tomorrow we've got two other guys coming over, Brady and you know, Greg are coming over, and we're gonna play, uh, uh, hopefully, quite a few turns tomorrow. They'll go a little slower, because there's gonna be more units on the board, and we'll be guiding and coaching and explaining rules as we go along, because they have not played previously, but they have read the rules, so that's a good thing. So, a very interesting dynamic scenario and where I'm trying to do some different things and it's forcing, it's forced actually, the Americans to move all of their armor capable units away and uh, uh, over here to deal with this issue. And they've kept their, uh, their infantry in place here. I've now been able to have my Fallschirmjäger bounce or route uh, one scout car unit away we're now going to press up on this German, uh, this uh, French unit here and uh, potentially capture a uh, VP location, but also uh, clear a road so that our guys can uh, toddle off the map this way, high speed exit that way if possible. Alternatively, we'll go through the middle, uh, you know, go through this, this middle section here. I'm obviously concerned these units could all uh, mount up and you know, cut my, uh, sp split my forces, things of that nature, but um, I know Pete's already thought of that because he's brought this, this unit down here to harass my artillery. Uh, and all the reinforcements come on uh, for the Americans, that's where the 3rd Infantry Division will come on, and they're going to come over this way and uh, through that pretty rough terrain, but there are some decent roads sort of along here that they could venture in on, so we'll see what happens there. And uh, it's all—it's going to be all fun and games tomorrow. So we'll see. We'll uh, do a little update tomorrow at some point and catch up with you guys. All the best.